Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm Rahul, this one's going to be up <clears throat> a little bit sick. We're going to do a quickie because i got a busy week ahead of me. Um, five final exams and then off to Berlin. If you guys didn't know, I got 10th place over the Daytona Regional Championships with the Vespa Quinn. I bubbled, unfortunately. Um, so my thought, pro I was going to play Pikachu's Akron for this event, or Rayquaza, and I felt pretty good about both those decks. But as we were getting closer and closer to the event, um, by that I mean like 3 a.m., I thought about all the decks. I was like, well, Pikachu Zekrom exists. Um, Archie exists. Zoragrub exists. Blah, blah, blah. And so I looked up Nicholas Moffat's... Um, well, I, first I talked to Ian Robb about his list. And he played him a choke. And I thought that was just unnecessary. So I pulled up Moffat's list at like 2.30, 3am. Changed the EVs because he uses just the wrong EVs. And I said, you know, this list looks fine. I'm going to play this. And... In hindsight, the Archies and Swampert combo was actually just awful. I wish that these two cards were Audinos like I had thought about, but again, that meta call is not something that I had foreseen. I was going back to a Laser Verbank format, yada yada. So let's explain some of the techs. The Watch and Learn Sudwudo is mainly for um, Pikazak to copy and take a big prize. It's also good against Zorak if they kind of play a little bit sloppily. The Oracore was okay. It was kind of just like there. Um, it helped against Egg Splat, which is on, I mean, whatever. Um, uh, everything else is, like, pretty standard. The lab was really good, um, throughout the tournament. I didn't hit anything that had a Zerkertry kind of effect. The one special charge was a little bit suspect in my mind. I wish I had another, for real. Um, um, other than that, the two counters were really, really good for the event and how the metagame shaped up. Because having a six, uh, having six energies as opposed to the usual four made it so I couldn't get enhanced hammer to fob it out of the game. Because I had technically six energies to attack with. Um, yeah. So without further ado, I'll jump into the event and talk about my performance. So I, round one, went up against um, Alex Joplin. Uh, our, ironically, we played like round one or two the past two weekends, or two expanded regionals. Uh, and he was playing Zorgarb last time. He's playing Zorgarb this time. The matchup was super favored for me. He did play Oracorio, um, but game one, he, I, I like never saw it. Um, and I just beat him. And then game two, he did get it out. But he used it on this really weird turn where he only got value off it for one prize. And and he was already at three prizes. So, like, when I knocked it out, I, like, didn't have to overextend or anything. I just, like, took a knockout and, like, put, a, put myself back to two. And I think I end in the same turn or something. And he didn't have much. And all I had to do was kill, like, a Shaman or a Lele or something the next turn. And I did. I think he played uh, Dumbbells. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I don't remember why, but it was really hard for me to kill Zorik that turn. Um, but yeah, and then the following round, I played against Andreas Estrada, who was playing Buzzwell Lucario GX. And game one got a little bit dicey um, because I had pitched my blower super early because I just saw Buzzwalls. And he attached a Fury Belt, I think, and so I had to use it, maybe. Um, no, no, no Fury Belt, no Fury Belt. He like put a Brooklyn down, and I was going to pitch the blower anyway, so I was just like, might as well. But I, 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 you know, I, like, we were at two to two, and I, I was never going to, um, I was never going to put a ex or gx down. So I like, and he kept putting focus sashes on stuff. So I kept, um, I kept putting, like, one damage counter on both his like Rayolus, because he had like two or three Pokemon. And so like, if if he ace roll it, that you know, like, I made it so I put him in like a checkmate position, where like he couldn't kill me if he didn't evolve to. Whoa! Well, Lucario, and if he did evolve to Lucario, I would kill him and win the game. And so I did. And then game two, he um, drew six off on Abyssal Hand, like literally on like the second turn of the game. Got a double prize. And then I took a knockout on a Buzzle GX because he just went double Buzzle GX. And then he went Lucario to knock my guy out with a Sash. And then I went Blower, kill it, and I won the game. Um,. Round three, I was on stream against Austin Ellis, who was playing Archie Stois. Uh, this went to a close, close series, but um, I think I squeaked it out in the very end. I don't really remember how many games we went to. It was on stream, so if you guys want to check that out, go to Critical Hit, Critical Hit GG to check it out. Um, round four, I went up with Scott Stokely playing Blacephalon and Expanded. A little bit strange. It was pretty good, honestly. The deck set up the way it's supposed to set up. But the nature of Blacephalon is that every single attacker in his deck is a two-prizer, besides on the three-prize turning point turn, and if he commits to Beast Energy. So I pretty much was able to go trade two for one on the first one, 
and then one for two, one for two, and I closed out the game. And, like, no matter if he end me or didn't end me, it didn't matter. Uh, this is the match where, like, game two, I managed to get out Swampert, and I, like, attached to it turn one. So it, like, instantly became a threat for him that he had to deal with. Um, yeah, I was like, okay, cool. This is the one matchup where I think, like, Swampert is, like, acceptable to kind of pitch a little bit of extra resources to get out because I don't need everything for this matchup. Um, and then round five, I went up against Brett Burns, who was playing Zoro, Zoro Toad. And he was playing a very similar list to the DDG guys, maybe like two or three cards off. Um, Brett, game one, was put in a position where he could either hit me with a Toad, with Quake, um, and Laser, and hope I... Either he hits heads on Laser and Quakes, and then I go Tails. Or, but if I wake up and I take... <clears throat> but if I wake up and knock him out, I win the game immediately. Or he kills me with Zorark and guarantees the knockout. But... If I, I think I was out of VS Seekers, but if I have Choice Ban plus like a way to discard two more Pokemon or something, I had game. And he broke the lock and I had all that um, because, you know, my deck was thin already, yada yada. Game two, Brett was faced with another similar situation and he chose to opt to not break the lock. And he did hit Tails. And so I just retreated into a Fresh Festival Queen, attached to New Energy, and knocked his Toad out. So I had taken like four prizes to his like two. And he had to go in with like another Toad at this point and hope for laser flips. Uh, an enemy low, and it did not work out in his favor. So I 2-0 Brett, I go to 5-0, I need one more win now to put myself into day two, I go up against David Cooper, who's playing Archie Stoys, we go to a game three nail biter actually, and in game three, he pretty much has nothing, like literally nothing going for him. And he tries to set up a big whale um, to do Towering Splash, but even with a Towering Splash, we would only take three prizes, I wouldn't be able to knock him out that turn, um, but I was going to Grab his shaman on the bench and kill it. <laughs> Sorry. While well, bouncing a double combi in my hand. And I was going to kill it with the... Not the Swampert. I was going to kill it... Yeah, with the Swampert. Because I had attached to it already. And in doing so, he would have to return kill my Swampert or kill a combi. And if he did that, then I just had game in hand, pretty much. <laughs> so I go to 6-0. I go up against Jimmy Pinarvis. Um, game 1, I have to chorus to 1. Because my hand is literally garbage. And I open Rangru. And I had Unknown on the bench. So I said... You know, we'll see where this takes me. Uh, it did not take me anywhere. I unknown, I stretched her to put the unknown back. I lost a couple turns later. <clears throat> and then game two, there was two crucial turns where Jimmy flipped heads on a Toxic Laser, and I flipped tails to stay asleep, letting my Vespa get knocked out going back into his turn, which I needed that not to happen to just wake up and pretty much just win the game on the spot, I think. Um... I think I had either one or one or two prizes, but there was a Toad in the active, and um, both times it was a little bit frustrating because, yeah, and so it was a quick 2-0, but I did feel the matchup was close, and I knew every card in their deck at the end of it, so it wasn't discouraged. I go up against a good friend Clayton after this. Um, Clayton is playing Buzzwool uh, with no real answer to me, and uh, that's all she wrote. Like Most of Clayton's deck was like a carbink-based Buzzwool, and it just kind of folded under the pressure of Greed. Um, and I went up against Shocklock. Game one, he demonstrated the combo after I took the first knockout instantly, and I played the entire game out where we drew past kind of thing, where I drew past, and he went draw, Devo Spray, Evo Shock, pick up, Devo Spray, Evo Shock, pick up, Devo Spray, Evo Shock, pick up, and then a couple times you go like AZ, pick like pick up, uh, AZ, like Devo Shock, Evo Shock, pick up, and then I'd be like, okay, then you go Pal Pet, put them back in, do it all over again. I'm just like, okay, I could never deck him out, so I picked up my cards, and then game three. Two, he went, I went first, I paralleled him to three, and I said, what do you got for me? And then he went, put a beach down, Ultra Ball for a little pup, Bridget for like a little pup, Raichu Raichu, or Eevee, Eevee, Level Ball for another one, and I was like, oh my god, what the heck? And then he like, put the beach down and beach for like five, and I was like, oh, I'm so fucked. Uh, and then I lost. Like, And then he demonstrated the lock once again, and I picked up my cards. Um... I don't want to waste my time. I go to 7-2, and then I go round 10 against Jimmy Pinarvis once again in the morning. Um, game 1 is another series of laser flips that goes, unfortunately, in Jimmy's favor. And Game 2, Jimmy opens a Shaman, uh, ends himself to 6, and me to 6, draws absolutely nothing. I kill him. Turn 2. Uh, it's very easy to get to that number of damage and if, if you're bees. And then Game 3, it comes down to the wire once again. But I have an unfortunate hand where 
I drop a turn and it's my one of my last energies, so I literally cannot. No, I draw I draw the Swamper or something, and like I need to compress it away to get the one extra Pokemon to knock him out. Um, but because I had top decked it, I could not sick a my hand away because I would have decked. So I had to hit him for not a sustainable amount of knockout, and he ace roll it, killed me. And then I was just one turn too far behind because again, a one turn of laser flip. I mean, that's the magic comes down to the laser flips really what determines everything. Um, round eleven, we're going against Matthew Paget playing RG Stoys. Um, yeah, I donked his egg game one, and then game two, I just rolled him because he never set up. Um, game th- round twelve, we're against Caleb Gedimer. Game one was one where I barely could not close out the game because I had prized uh, a couple of Pokemon and I never hit that crucial one shot on Zork. And laser, and that game laser doesn't matter. Game two, laser flips did matter twice. Vespa Quinn went to sleep. I didn't wake up, and I had little. I was literally sitting there with game in my hand. Um, it was rather unfortunate, but that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. Um, it was sad to go out on a note like that, and so I was now out of top eight, or so I thought. And then I go up against Blade Hunter on thirteen, playing Toad Garb, which had no real answer to me again. And Toad Garb is not Toad Zoro, so they don't draw everything in their deck and do everything in their deck. So I just kind of beat him because weakness in typing and then round 14 i go i get up paired in nick robinson i was planning on just id and team if i could get top 16 but nick robinson is playing egg splat and he bodies me game one game two he had huh. game two i took the first knockout he i put the silent lab down he does some stuff he doesn't have a supporter he goes mail mail misses both and then he goes let's go to game two or three because he misses two turns of knockout so i'm now in the commanding driver's seat and I will not miss a knockout for the rest of the game, you know? Um, game three, he misses the first knockout. I take the first knockout. He discards two Blore super early. I don't know their Blore count. I saw at least two Blore and a Shrine. So I was, I was assuming that. Apparently they had a third Blore in there too. So I go Lab and after like four to four. Um, and he, yeah, pretty much we get to a point where like, He's hitting me, I'm hitting him, and then, like, there's a point where, like, one of us could run out of attackers, so he has to put the egg on the bench. I think we're, I'm at two, he's at four, and I, he missed two turns of, um, egg splat once again due to my lab and, um, just other, like, just missing an energy one of the turns, I think. And so, in that instance, I went or Corio attached the counter energy retreat. Um, and put, he had, I think, seven, so I put three on the bench and execute, killed it, and put four on the active, therefore leaving both my attackers alive in case of shenanigans. And I also had, like, stretcher, I saved my stretcher to put two Komi and Vesmukun back in to set up for having another full attacker if I needed it in the situation, which I did. Uh, I didn't need it, but, like, it ended up coming, it could have come in handy if he had been trading more efficiently and taking the knockouts that I thought he would be taking. So I win the game, and I get up, and I'm just kind of like, okay, whatever, top 16, you know. And then somebody comes up and goes, hey, every other game next to you naturally tied. And I was like, what? And he's like, there's five, there's five people at 30 points, and three of them are going to make top eight. And I was like, oh my god, excuse me? And so I am a little nervous. I, f- I thought I had a decent shot. I wasn't confident because I played against Caleb on the day, and Caleb did pretty well. But I also had Matthew and Blaine, who did not have the best of days. Um, and then I completely forgot that Nick came in at a pretty high record. So Nick had a pretty unfortunate day himself. Um, and Jimmy also came in at a high record. So he had an unfortunate day himself. Um, standings go up. I am 10th. My friend Jose is 9th. Um, the difference was 3% from me to top 8. So that's about a game from anybody. Um, but that all being said, I could not be happy with the way I did. The deck was definitely not optimal. I did not put any time into it. I just played it because I wanted to play bees again. Um, and it's my comfort pick. It's not like I was not... It's not like this was like a long scheme plan that I had planned out saying I was not playing bees. And then I played it. It was just like I showed up. Yeah. Yeah. Tested until 3 a.m. And then I said, I'm playing bees because everything else sucks. Um, if And I like I literally was joking about the Audino the night before with Sam. And I wish I had gone through with my bold call to put in two Audinos in place of the Archies and Swampert. Um, 
because I think those Ladinos would have really helped out, um, especially with the laser flips. I'm sure I have to find them at the right time, but it would they're they're self discarding, and I played against like five toad decks and a shock lock, so I think they would have really come in handy in every single one of those matchups. Um, yeah, at the end of the day, top sixteen is not bad. Uh, this is my last expanded event of the year. I will not be in Hartford, so yeah, uh, puts me in a pretty good spot. I think I'm pretty much locking up top sixteen here. So thank you guys all for watching. I do appreciate it. Sorry for another bees video. Um, my bad, but please leave a like, please subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I will try to put out something else or some more content before I head out to Berlin this week. I will be leaving for Berlin on Wednesday, but I have five finals in between as I stated earlier. So it'll be a little bit of a hectic week for me. Uh, thank you again as always for watching.